The first thing we wanna to do to get this thing installed is go ahead and take out the factory track bar. So let's get that unbolted so we can start figuring out where to mount these brackets and get our holes drilled. All right, so once you get the factory track bar pulled out, uh, you're gonna go take out this bracket and you're gonna slide it up inside of the original pocket where the end of the factory track bar went. Now, if you are anything like me, you probably have a bunch of dirt and sand and debris in there. Uh, so go ahead and clear that out of the pocket uh, down in here, whether you use a vacuum or compressed air or whatever you're gonna do uh, to make sure you blast that out so that way the bracket can sit properly. Once you've got that cleared out, we're gonna take the bracket and we'll just drop it right on in in here. And what you wanna do is make sure that this top edge right here is flush with this bracket and that the back of the bracket, of course, is pushed all the way against that uh, edge there. And once you get that done, then you can go ahead and make sure that's lined up. If you are not using, or if you don't have a power wagon, uh, apparently the factory bolt here can be used, just kind of hold it in place. Uh, but if you have a power wagon like I do, then you're gonna need to uh, kind of hold that or bolt that, or excuse me, uh, kind of clamp that in place so that way you can get that hole marked and then you can go ahead and drill that hole. Now here we are on the bottom side of that driver's side bracket. So the other hole we drilled is right here and you'll notice a hole here and a hole here. We're gonna go ahead and drill those out to the half inch size. So go ahead and use the same drill bit that you're using for this hole and go ahead and make those larger. All right, so here's the bottom of the bracket and on these two holes, I drilled them out and made them a little bit larger. Uh, I would suggest, however, using gloves and probably long sleeves because the little metal shavings that you're drilling and falling off of there are hot as hell. Uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> um, but either way, it should drill out pretty easily uh, because the holes are already there and shouldn't take you too long. And now that we've got those holes all drilled out, we can now start uh, putting everything kind of together. We're on the home stretch basically. Uh, so of course your first bracket will drop in right here and your secondary bracket is going to go, of course, right there and it kind of all hooks together. Now, there is a note in the instructions that the bottom holes here might not necessarily line up uh, with the bottom holes on the new bracket and that's okay because I guess from the factory or whatever, they're not always identical, um, but you can just kind of get this loosely bolted up and then use the holes that are on here as a guide to help uh, make the holes a little bit bigger to make sure you can get all the bolts through. All right, so I've got the bracket uh, installed. Now, before you tighten anything down, there's a very specific order that you need to do things. Um, and first things first, you wanna make sure there's a little spacer that they include. Make sure you have that installed um, you know, loosely just so that way, uh, again, you've got that proper spacing for the bar to fit in there. And then you should have two bolts on the bottom here and then another one right here, uh, of course, in the middle of the bracket, which you can't see. And we're gonna go through and tighten those a specific order. Now, if you have a power wagon like this, um, I'm also going to need to drill a hole here uh, for uh, another bolt because we're not gonna be using the factory uh, location hole that is there, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get this bolted in first before we drill this uh, so that while we're drilling in the, the proper spot. Now instructions are pretty clear uh, for this. You've got the two bottom bolts here and those are gonna be, uh, you're gonna tighten those down kind of snug and then you're gonna back it off one full turn. And then you've got that center bolt here and you're going to tighten that to 100 foot pounds. Uh, so make sure that you are using a torque wrench. And then once that is set, then you can go ahead and tighten the bottom ones to 100. And then, uh, you know, if you have a regular 2500, you're going to be uh, tightening the factory bolt that is going here. Or if you have a power wagon, of course, now we know where we're going to need to drill. But let's go ahead and get that bolted up first. Okay, so now I've got the bracket tightened down. So I have the middle bolt tight as well as these two bottom ones. And then this top uh, little bracket is still going to be loose. We're not tightening or bolting, bolting anything on here. Uh, the last step I need to do is drill out this hole. Now you do have to drill through here and on the other side of the frame uh, because uh, that's what we need to do. So start with your small, uh, you know, probably quarter bit and keep going up from there until you get through that size. And that way we can thread the factory bolt uh, back through that location again. And uh, from there, we just have to bolt up our new uh, bar here. So on the right track and we're getting close. So. Uh, just a couple more holes to drill and we will be on the home stretch. The third and rear track bar is uh, installed here, so it's all set up. Now, when you install the bar, unfortunately, there's a nice uh, third and sticker in the middle that you can't see, uh, but just make sure that your fittings are facing correctly. So on the driver's side, it'll be sticking up. 
kind of see it. There it is. Uh, so you can see it right there. And then on the passenger side, it is on the very bottom. You can see the little silver part on the very end. Uh, so now we just need to go out and test drive this thing and see how it does. What's going on everybody? So I've had the Thurin uh, rear track bar now installed for, I don't know, two weeks maybe. Um, and so far I've had no issues. Installation went along pretty easily. Uh, the main reason I picked up the bar, as I had mentioned before, is if we were driving on the highway and I had the rooftop tent uh, basically full, packed up, ready to go, um, and we were driving and we hit some dips or bumps, the truck would really start rocking, uh, which was obviously not very good uh, for passengers or for me. It made the truck feel really unstable, uh, rocking back and forth and for certain people it made them kind of nauseous and it was just not a very good setup so after the new track bar was installed the old one didn't seem like it had you know any issues or anything there wasn't any like physically broken on the the bushings or anything but now that i've had the rear one installed uh it's nice now i thought that with it installed i might be able to hear it occasionally or you know something like that just because it doesn't have the same bubble gum bushing that the factory bar has uh, but it's actually been really nice. You don't really notice that it's back there and you don't realize that it's not factory, uh, of course, other than the truck being more stable. Um, and it makes it nice because now when we're on the, the freeway and we're driving, if I kind of swerve like that and I get the truck to rock, it rocks side to side and then it settles and stops. Before it would rock side to side and rock side to side and side to side and you know, deep going is pretty bad. Um, and you know, before I was even able to trigger the stability control, which is pretty bad because that's not good that the truck is shaking uh, so much, of course, that the stability control kicks in and tries to intervene and, and prevent uh, you know, the truck from flipping over, or being out of control or whatever it thought it was doing. But again, the truck just drives how it should. There's no weird you know, back and forth thing. Um, so, I mean, I think it's definitely mandatory if you are you know, loading up your truck more or if you've got a lot of miles on your truck, it's not a bad idea to uh, replace it and throw the aftermarket one in. And that way, if you do end up towing a lot of stuff or you've got a lot of stuff in the truck bed, whatever it is, um, your truck just tows like normal and it'll be nice and stable and you're not gonna have to worry about uh, you know, making yourself sick or just feeling uncomfortable as you're driving around because going around the turn of the mountain and the truck you know, rocking and rocking and rocking is really unsettling. So. Uh, the third track bar definitely recommend and uh, you know of course there's links down here below uh, to pick one up and insulation should be uh, not too bad you know just make sure you've got some good drill bits and uh, a good cordless drill or a corded drill just make sure you don't run out of power and uh, you should be okay with insulation and of course if you like this video uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already um, comment below if you have any questions or comments and uh, of course we'll see you in the next video oh and if you're interested i've got a thurin front track bar as well as the synergy front tie rod and the draggling install in another video so go ahead and be sure to look for those as well